Welcome back to the Making the Radio Cut blog. I'm Michelle, and today we've got part two of our interview with Chloe from BLI in Long Island. So let's get to it. Favorite part of your job? Favorite part of my job is definitely being around music. And, I mean, I get to sit in a studio for five hours listening to my favorite songs and talking about my favorite songs and about my favorite artists and celebrities. And uh, to me, there's nothing better than that. Biggest challenge you faced in radio and how did you overcome it? Biggest challenge I've faced? Um, there's actually a couple. I mean, generally, you, you have to work to get to, you know, somewhere where you really want to be. And I've, I've worked very hard to get where I am now on Long Island, and I love it. And I wouldn't have changed a thing about my past. Um, but, you know, overcoming some of those obstacles were the low pay that you have when you're first starting out and you're trying to, like, scrounge up for this bill and that bill and, you, you know, you're, you're cutting corners because you're not making a whole lot of money when you're starting out, but you'll do whatever it takes to get there. And um, the other big challenge I faced was when I lost my job almost two years ago and uh, kind of had to bounce back from that, and that was, that was rough being out of it full time for a while. But if that didn't happen, I wouldn't be where I am and just – Dealing with the adversity only made me stronger, and it makes me appreciate where I am even more. So I'm glad, in in retrospect, that it happened. And this is kind of a depressing question, especially for someone like me who's not full-time yet and is kind of wondering, oh, is there going to be a full-time job for me when I graduate? But where do you see radio in five years? Oh, boy. Um, yeah, it is, it is tough to say. I, I think radio will survive because people don't want to pay for what they can get for free. And radio is so portable and it's just everywhere you can just have a boom box and you can turn it on and just uh, yeah ipods are like that too but not everybody can afford an ipod and not everybody can you know have that in their car they maybe don't have the adapters for their car radio is just there it's there and you turn it on and it's free so i don't see it going anywhere i think in five years um i i hope that some of these companies will start seeing that voice tracking and and syndication and all these shows from like other places are not as local and and i hope local starts working more for them we're very fortunate where i am now that we have live jocks 24 hours a day seven days a week and we stay very local and focused on our market and i really hope that that people can see that it does still work and and maybe once the economy gets better other companies will do the same and and hopefully it'll prosper i have faith I guess that's what I'm going to have to have, too. But um, as people can see from your fast facts, you've been a lot of places in radio. How do you learn a new market when you get there? That's a good question. Um, it's You just you hang around with people. You get to know people. You see where they hang out. You pick up the local. Um, when I lived in Pennsylvania, we had uh, in Wilkes-Barre, Scranton, Pennsylvania, we had this thing called The Weekender, and it would come out on, like, Wednesdays, and it was basically, the, like, like, the young people's guide to nightlife and local stuff in the market. And just, like, flipping through that for a couple weeks in a row, you can really learn a sense of where the hot spots are and what people are doing. And you just got to drive around and learn. When I first came to Long Island, I went on events. I still do it to this day. I've been here almost a year, and I'll still jump in the van with the street team and say, oh, that event sounds like fun. It's on another part of the island that I haven't explored yet. I'm going. And I'll just hop in the van and, and just go and see these different places and um, really just getting to know people and opening your eyes and looking around to see, see what's out there in the market. What advice would you give to a college student who's trying to break into radio? Work hard. Don't for a second think that it's going to be easy. Don't for a second think that you're going to get stuff handed to you. You have to really show that you want it. You have to be passionate and learn, learn, learn. Make connections and just try to get to know as many people in radio as you can and um, really just learning hands-on and, and don't give up. Keep, keep the passion alive. And last question, kind of a fun bonus type question. How did you end up with your on-air name? Oh, <laughs> Um, I used Lisa G at a couple other stations. I actually used my real name, Lisa Gold, at a couple stations, too. And then it got shortened to Lisa G at one point. And I even used it when I was part-time here at BLI. And we were set to go. I was going to use Lisa G. And then all of a sudden, we got a cease and desist from a Lisa G that uh, works for Howard Stern. So uh, we decided that we should probably change it. Uh, and so my boss came up with Chloe because he's a fan of 24. <laughs> so Chloe O'Brien from 24 inspired him, and now my on-air name is Chloe. Well, Chloe slash Lisa, that's actually all the time we have for today. So thank you very much for talking to us. Oh, no problem. That was fun. <laughs>